Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. Oli the son of Nume is my name and I hope I find you well. For those in South Africa, you know that there are elections taking place today where the South Africans are taking to the polling stations to elect their next national and provincial government. We hope that they are having a peaceful uh, day. I've been to a number of polling stations in Greater Johannesburg and what I've seen is quite impressive. There is no kind of intimidation, there is no effort, or let me say brazen effort, to try and steal election by the incumbent. So I hope that whatever the outcome, South Africans do get the government they wish to have. So I'm here to talk about the speech that was released just recently by former Triple C uh, president, that is advocate Nelson Chamisa. You'll know that going into last year's elections in Zimbabwe, advocate Chamisa was the leader of the Citizens Coalition for Change, that is the Yellow Party, that came out second in the election, and Chamisa himself came second in the presidential election, losing to incumbent uh, president Emerson Nangakwa. He disputed that he lost. He has always disputed that he, he lost, but he did not take the matter to court where a ruling was supposed to be made as to whether or not the election results should stand. And therefore, we saw President Nangakwa being reassigned uh, the head of state after his inauguration. So Chamisa resigned from Triple C and now there are rumors that he wants to start a, a certain other party uh, which will apparently be wearing blue we have seen he, some of his uh close lieutenants that include amos Jibaya, gift ostello siziba and prince tobago sibanda traversing the country uh, to try and prop up this new party so chamisa has released a statement uh stating what he says is uh, an update on the resolution of the of what he terms disputed August 2023 elections. And um, while I'm not going to read everything that he wrote because it's a three-page statement, uh, okay, I can read with your permission. Okay, he says, I've prepared this brief statement to update you on the efforts around the resolution of the disputed outcome of the August 2023 elect general elections that did not produce a credible and legitimate government chosen by the citizens of Zimbabwe. As you are aware, following the Shambolic and disputed August 2023 elections, we held, the nation we held nationwide consultations with you, the citizens, and all other stake relevant stakeholders on the ways and means to resolve the electoral fraud. You, the citizens of Zimbabwe, are very clear and firm on the position that the elections were improperly conducted, indeterminate, and produced a manipulated outcome. The pos this position is supported and confirmed by SADC, the African Union, the European Union, the Commonwealth, COMESA, and all other intergovernmental inter organizations which developed which deployed election observer missions to Zimbabwe. There is no other election in the history of elections in this country that has invited resounding and universal condemnation as the August 2023 elections. This matter must be resolved so that the country can have proper elections that produce a proper government from the citizens. Fellow citizens, as your presidential choice, you in your millions, nearly over two million, gave a clear mandate albeit in a disputed and contested election. That mandate cannot be abdicated, abandoned, or surrendered. Upon and with your mandate on the 26th of September 2023, we wrote to our regional party, SADC, the guarantor of the values and principles of the aspirations of the common agenda and common will of the people of Southern Africa. On 23 October 2023, SADC responded to our request and advised that they were giving the matter due consideration. <laughs> Meanwhile, we have noted the various meetings in the leadership of Sarkis held, including 
the latest extraordinary summit of the Okan Troika on the 23rd of March 2024 in, in Lusaka, Zambia. Therefore, we have advisedly been patiently waiting on our request. On the 29th of April, however, since considerable time has passed, yet we had sought to resolve this matter much earlier, we delivered our follow-up to SAC, for which we await a response to determine a clear path forward to resolve the governance crisis and leadership dispute. Our request to SAC was and remains very simple, that as the regional body which Zimbabwe has signed up for membership, invested some authority in the supernatural inter in the super, supranational intergovernmental organization, we require thy facilitation to peacefully resolve the issues around the irregular and disputed elections. The problem of the manipulated election that produced a government without a mandate from the citizens has since culminated into high levels of intolerance, violations, repression, illegal recalls of citizen representatives of the very same disputed election in itself an unprecedented move and an encyclopedic infraction of democratic tenets, unlawful arrest and persecution of citizens upon all other kinds of archaic, intimidatory, and suppressive, suppressive manifestations of the leg of Monday. It is common knowledge that our country is facing a plethora of problems. Most of them are basic and symptomatic of bad governance, broken politics, and disputed leadership we have a tanking economy, systemic corruption, 49% of the population living in extreme poverty, US $1.8 billion lost to looting annually, US $800 million worth of gold smuggling, smuggled monthly, galloping hyperinflation, half of the population that is food insecure, over 3 million Zimbabweans forced to migrate, 89% unemployment and disputed national processes, and elections. Only a legitimate government chosen by the citizens has both the confidence and mandate to deliver on their necessities and demands. You voted for a government that would deliver health care, energy, water, jobs, step currency, quality, education, and other basic services. You know why you voted for change. The current challenges of failing to resolve the huge national debt, high inflation, currency distortions, drought, salvation, starvation, poverty, poor income, the hostile political environment, an air of sadness and brain drain are all symptoms of a government without a proper mandate. Zimbabwe's challenges are a direct result of the lack of legitimacy and mandate to govern. A truly elected citizen government is the solution for good governance and service delivery. We reiterate this opportunity, we reiterate this point to SADC the AU and indeed to the international community that it is untidy and untenable to sanitize or fertilize theft of elections and electoral malpractices by turning a deaf ear and casting a blind eye to matters of gigantic electoral fraud. Such is an affront to the Africa we want. As you are aware, elections are the highest level through which a mandate is attained or ascertained as a contract between the government and the government. Between the governing and the government. No government can justly claim authority to govern unless it is based on the will and consent of the people. On that score, none must be allowed to come into office through the back door, the window, cohesive means, or command antics and tactics. Our regional and international institutions cannot condemn a process and yet condone it and ultimately endorse it. It would be a con contradiction in terms of in terms to determine a process as flawed and yet condone its outcome. Fellow citizens, may I hasten to say the following and exhaustion of available remedies and peaceful means to resolve national issues is not a manifestation of weakness or what of or that we are devoid of other ideas and means. It is our strict commitment to finding each other and amicably resolving our, poly, our points of conflict, disjuncture, and disagreement. We have committed to a peaceful resolution of disputes and intend to exhaust all available peaceful remedies. As you are aware, millions of you agree with this approach. Zimbabwe is too beautiful and precious to be destroyed by flames of political disputes under our watch. Peace is fragile, peace is sacrosanct, and the breakdown of peace 
knows no winner. The opposite of peace leaves us all losers. Our beautiful country can never progress on the, on the back of disunity and successive disputed national processes, including contested elections. We are acutely aware of the agency of this matter and more importantly, that there can never be any talk of 2028 of a viable and and step future for this country without resolving August 2023, the broken past and disputed politics. It remains our hope and indeed your hope that all these concerns will be addressed with urgency and seriousness. Our, on my part, I'm doing everything necessary to, to the extent of God's will to seek a lasting solution to the perennial challenges affecting our beloved country. Locally and nationally, I've engaged all the stakeholders, including the traditional leadership, business leadership, civil society at large, political parties, and members of the diplomatic corps. In particular, I've also sought the mediatory role of the church leadership to help resolve the disputed elections and contested national processes, albeit with handicapped progress. I have even numerously afforded engagement with other presidential contenders. Uh, here he talking, he's talking about Naga and he's aware of our point of dispute and the proposed way forward. We have also developed and shared our roadmap, our roadmap with all key stakeholders, which paper we are ready to make public in due course. We have engaged different stakeholders within the SAC region. At heads of state level, I have engaged leaders through delegations that I sent to the various capitals of the region and the continent to brief esteemed excellencies about the election dispute, the political statement, and our proposed way forward. I therefore urge you to take an active role in peacefully determining the destiny of our country. I exhort you, fellow citizens, the intercessors, and the church to continue to pray for a smooth and peaceful transition in our country. Stay the course, hold the fort, hold fast, and stand involved. Stand ready. Change is upon us. For everyone, God is in need. God bless you. God bless Zimbabwe. I thank you under my name and the end. That is Nelson Chamisa on the 27th of May. So, in brief, uh, what Chamisa is saying here is that he's not doing anything. Actually, he's not saying anything. Because this rhetoric is empty. This rhetoric has always been empty. His rhetoric has always been empty. I know you are going to, I'm going to be very unpopular here, but the fact of the matter is the 2023 elections are done and dusted. He can write as many letters that he wishes for as long as there is an atmosphere which is viewed by the outside world and by other political stakeholders within and without Zimbabwe as peaceful and not uh, a crisis point. There is nothing that you are going to do. Uh, and this is what is actually happening in Zimbabwe. There is an atmosphere of relative peace. We have had worse situations before. I will give you an example of the period between 1983 and 1987. People were dying. People were being killed presently, resulting in 20,000 of them uh, being killed, hundreds of thousands displaced, Several children left without parents. What did the international community do? Nothing. Until a man by the name Kenan Banana decided enough is enough. We must bring these two parties to the negotiating table. And it resulted in the unity accord which brought about the peace that we had between 1987 and year 2000. So, the 2008 government of national unity, as I've always stated, was a construct of not only a disputed election in Zimbabwe. The SAC and the AU were ready to endorse Robert Mugabe as an elected president of the Republic of Zimbabwe until the situation reached crisis point when soldiers in uniform decided enough is enough and began to turn against the government, looting uh, the country and beating up police officers in uniform, while also the situation on the ground economically 
became untenable and ZANU-PF decided we cannot do this anymore without risking a coup. So what happened is that to avert a looming coup, ZANU-PF was dragged to the negotiating table by the circumstances, not by Moken Swangirai, not by the SAT alone, not by the AU alone, but by the situation on the ground. You will remember that South African president then, Tabo Mbegi, had declared that there is no crisis in Zimbabwe based on the disputed election. But because the situation on the ground necessitated that ZANU-PF cannot continue alone or if they tried, they would face a coup. They scared of what was going to happen, scared that if a coup happens, they're going to lose power completely. They were then forced to the negotiating table. Those conditions do not exist now. The 2023 elections are done and dusted. In August, Emerson Nangaka will be becoming the chairperson of the SAT, to which Nelson Chamisa helplessly places his hopes. And if you read uh, this statement carefully, you'll realize that Chamisa himself is not decided on who Zimbabweans should place their hopes. Should they place their hopes on him by saying that he has gone all these other places and by leaving the party that he represented going to this election, resigning from Triple C, if whoever resolves, because when people come to sit and decide, they will involve the opposition and the ruling party. Triple C has a new president now, and that new president is not Nelson Chamisa. He has resigned from the party that he was representing. It doesn't matter the reasons that he gave for his resignation. But the Sadia cannot negotiate with him from a vacuum. Because right now, he's just an individual who is harboring plans to form another party. And people, when people voted, they voted a president of Triple C. So he doesn't know whether people should place their hopes on him, where he has shown that he is hopeless, whether they should place their hopes on the Satic or the AU. The Satic has already moved on. The AU is not even involved. Or people should place their hopes on God, as he says that they should pray. So whenever a leader, a political party leader, exhorts you to pray so that God will give them ideas on how to liberate you. What they are basically saying is that they are finished. They have reached a cul-de-sac. Chamisa is clearly uh, admitting to you that he has run out of ideas. And by clinging to the false hope that the 2023 elections will be held afresh, there will be a new election that the SAT, the AU, or whoever will force Zimbabwe into before we talk about 2028, he is proving to you that he has run out of ideas. You can continue to place your hopes in him, but this man has already told you that he has lost all hope in himself. He doesn't have any hope anymore in himself. That's why in himself, that's why he's talking about the Satak, he's talking about the AU, he's talking about God, he's even talking about you. So there is nothing for you to expect. What Chamisa should be doing right now, he should stop with the nostalgia of looking, of looking back to August 2023 and start governing in the places where he was elected. But unfortunately, he has also left that party which he led. So right now what he can do is to start concentrating, concentrating on this new movement that he wants to form and placing it in a better position to contest and win 2028, but also putting much pressure on the government to ensure that the 2028 election produces an election. Not that is not disputed, because we know that for as long as he loses, he's going to dispute. But one which will be having some level of being professionally run, so that whoever loses, even if they dispute the election result, will have very little space based on how the election would have been run. And how do we get there? We get there by ensuring that 
the SAT that he is talking to uh, and the AU that he is talking to uh, is not diverted into focusing on 2023 but only uses 2023 as the basis on which certain things should not be done in 2028. Not trying to force a rerun of 2023. That will not happen. He knows it's not going to happen. The SAC knows it's not going to happen. ZANU-PF knows it's not going to happen. I know it's not going to happen. You must also know it's not going to happen unless and until you want to continue living in false hope. You want to continue being misled by this guy who has lost all clues on how to remove Zanupia from power or how to govern places where he has been elected until he has left the party under which or which was a platform for him to engage everybody else. Right now he cannot, he's just, he's not different from everybody else, including you who is listening here because he doesn't represent anything. He only represents Chamisa and his personal hopes. He is not in a party. He is not in any organization. He is just a former uh, opposition party leader who hopes to start another new opposition party. So right now, don't be misled. You may hate me all you want. Call me all the names that you want. But right now, what Zimbabwe needs to be saved from is ZANU-PF, is Nelson Chamisa, and Chamisa's diehard supporters who don't want to put him to task. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it. But also, share your views with us, contact us, raise your points, and also raise your ideas. Thank you.